on here because today is family day in Canada and I just finished writing an email to my list, but I want to talk about the things that we pass on to our children. Specifically, I want to talk about generational patterns. Um, and, you know, it's a day that a lot of us, family day, these holidays come up and we're all about like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do together to have fun, you know, to hang out, to do stuff? And we spend so much of our energy, so much of our attention on just like doing stuff, <laughs> doing stuff. And when we think about what am I going to pass on to my kids? It's like, oh, I want to have fun. I want to do this. And we spend so much of our time, our money and energy accumulating more stuff, more experiences and we kind of throw this idea around like, oh, what legacy are you leaving for your kids, right? What legacy are we leaving? And we think about passing on money, stuff, things. But really what I want to jump into is, you know, as I was thinking about family day, I was thinking about what are the generational patterns, wounds, identities, beliefs that we actually are passing the baton on to our children. You know, I really want to talk to those of you who feel like you're getting a second chance. So if those of you that are jumping on here have experienced divorce, let me know. Say hello. Like, I've gone through a really terrible divorce. By the way, that was my story. I went through a really horrific divorce like about 10, 10 years ago, and it took a good yeah, like eight years of going through these repeating patterns over and over again before I finally got to the point that I'm like, I'm breaking the cycle for my children, not only for myself and relationship, but I'm breaking this cycle for my children, for my daughters, for my son, for my grandchildren, because, you know, if we don't break these cycles, in relationship that we have picked up from our mother, our grandmother, our father, whatever, we just keep passing them on. So I want to talk to those of you who are, you know, going through and saying, yes, I, I've been given a second chance. And maybe that's in a divorce. Maybe that's just like you've hit a rock bottom moment in your marriage, in your relationship. And by the way, this is like, and speaking to those of you, today I want to talk about love. It's kind of, you know, it was Valentine's Day yesterday. But this can be, you're just in a rough spot in your marriage or in your relationship. And maybe you've just like, oh, done another face plant again. And you just hit a point where you're like, seriously, again? <laughs> and maybe I have a moment of redemption. Maybe I've been given this opportunity for a second chance. And by the way, this can happen with our kids, with anything, maybe it's health, right? Like right now I'm talking about relationship, but we're talking about patterns that play out over and over again where we continue to have these destructive patterns that show up in our life. So I believe every day we're given a second chance, but you know, after my divorce, I got married super young. I was 23 when I first got divorced, 33 when I got you know, or 23 when I got married, uh, 31 or something when I got divorced. And it's like, I'm 44 now. So after that marriage, I went through years of continuing the same relationship cycles. And here's what I know now after looking back is that there are certain things, there's physical cycles that repeat themselves, there's emotional cycles that repeat themselves and spiritual roots that keep getting passed on over and over and over again. In my family, abandonment was a huge, huge thing. And I know for a lot of people it is. You know, abandonment had deep, deep roots in my family lineage. Um, so there was a feeling of abandonment, a fear of abandonment. There was a spirit of abandonment over our life. And it just kept repeating. It kept repeating. There was a spirit of anger and strife. Um, so a lot of times when we see that there's alcoholism and stuff that runs in the family, but there's this like, again, it's very rooted in that, like, I don't want to be alone, that fear of abandonment. So we sedate, we try to get that met elsewhere. Um, but there's, there was these things that were in my family that were like deep roots of abandonment, deep roots of strife, the, these roots of betrayal, right? That had been witnessed going on being passed generation by generation. And so as I sat here and I was like, you know, going within, watching my own journey, my own journey as a woman in relationship with men, constantly feeling like I had to like do everything for myself. Or I was tr attracting people that were unemotionally unavailable. Um, I was constantly like 
there was strife, there was struggle, right? To prove your worth, to prove your worth in relationship, to have the level of intimacy that you want, still always feeling alone long after my divorce. These cycles kept going on and on and on. And see, there was all these signs along the way. There always are. There's all these signs, right? There's something that's restless in your heart that's like, this isn't right. Why do we keep cycling through this? Why do I keep talking like this? Why is there this level of disrespect that keeps showing up? And yet we want something different but we're not willing to do what is required to create space for something different, right? So long after my divorce, I knew, you know, that something was not right in my spirit. Something was not right in my interaction. Something was not right about the way that I looked at men, thought about men, you know, communicated with men, communicated in my home. And yet, even though I said, well, I want this, I want something different, I wasn't really at the point, the breaking point to say, oh, I'm willing to do what it takes. I wasn't at the moment of surrender. And see, this is what I love. I love how God is always looking to get our attention. You know, God is always looking to get our attention and it comes from one of two ways. Number one, we either have a desire, you have a desire that's so strong in your heart that's like no one, no thing, no situation is gonna stop me. I want that and I'm getting it. And we've all felt that, and I say this a lot, because until we get to the point where what we want is so great, the desire, the hunger is so strong that we're like literally not going backwards. We're like, I am not going back. I want it so badly, right? The desire has to be so strong. And usually when God tries to speak to us, he speaks to us through our desire, right? Our desire is a reflection of our design. So that loneliness that we're feeling, and really tap into it is a desire for intimacy, a desire for connection, but we don't cultivate our desire. See, the problem is a lot of us won't really fully cultivate our desire. We won't really tune in and give ourselves permission to go, let me explore this. What is it that I really want? What we focus on is what we don't have, right? Instead of getting back to our original design so that fire doesn't get to really get ignited. Even if you're in a marriage that's kind of, you know, I hear this a lot. It's like, it's super flat. It's sexless, sexless. It's boring. It's, um, we're going through the motions. We're like roommates. I mean, I hear a lot of these things, right? For men and women and the, the fire is gone. So what we focus on is like, well, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Instead of focusing on what I desire, what is it that I want? I want more intimacy. I want my depth. I want more connection. I want to feel closer. I want to feel alive, you know, in my spirit, in my heart. So that when my partner walks in, I can't wait to love them. Right? We don't cultivate our desire. Instead, we focus on what we don't have. So we stay in the trap right? Disconnected from our desire, but yet not quite uncomfortable enough that we'll do anything about it. So we'll sit there in the complaining, we'll sit there in the discomfort, but really the pain isn't great enough and the desire isn't strong enough because we haven't cultivated. The second thing that, that I see, you know, God trying to get our attention. It's like, okay, well, you're not paying attention to the desire that I put in you. That's your design. I'm gonna allow you to experience your own pain. We make decisions, we're like, well, you know, I'll sit here and complain, he's not doing this, she's not doing that for me. She, you know, she's not giving me any affection, whatever. And instead of actually being the one to take the lead, we stay in our old patterns, we keep, we keep disconnected, we keep plugging along, whatever. And now we start to experience discomfort uneasiness in our relationship there's like resentment there's frustration right there's there's disconnection there starts to be mistrust and then what happens is we start to experience pain that discomfort turns into pain and literally another way is like our body keeps the score as we become more you know, we become sadder, we become more disconnected, we become more frustrated. The body's actually starting to talk to us physically, like we feel the tension in our chest, we feel the shortness of breath, we feel these things. So physically, we're now in pain or discomfort. Emotionally, we're uncomfortable. And you know, your heart is like, oh no, this is all wrong. And we still don't do anything. A lot of us still don't do anything because the pain is not great enough. And so we kind of keep getting kicked, these universal kicks in the butt, right? One more big fight, one more big blow up, one more instance where, you know, shit hit the fan. And, but every time 
It's not the same like before. It seems to be a little bit worse and a little bit worse, but not quite bad enough. And what happens is if we don't pay attention to the desire and we don't pay attention to the pain, eventually the pain gets so strong that we will start to self-sabotage. We'll start to self-destruct and we hit a point where the pain becomes so great. We're like, I am not putting up with this anymore. And unfortunately for so many people, that breaking point, is long after it's too late. It feels like it's long after it's too late. You know, something horrible has happened in our relationship and we're like, how can I go back on this? How can I fix this? And we don't even realize that subconsciously we've created that situation because we knew what we needed to do in our heart, but we kept ignoring our heart. We kept ignoring our spirit. And so it's kind of like you keep digging yourself a deeper and deeper hole so that eventually you kind of just burn the thing, you know, unintentionally. And the decision is made for us because we weren't courageous enough to really step forward boldly and speak what was on our heart, have those difficult conversations, be the first one to lean in, be in the discomfort. You know, we don't want to do it. So we hide, we hide, we hide until eventually something implodes. And now we're like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I did something horrific. And how am I ever going to get back? And so that's usually the breaking point, you know, where a relationship breaks apart or there's this gap. And this is what I'm talking about is sometimes we hit these moments and many of us will cycle through these things throughout our lives or you've witnessed your parents do it or whatever. And so we have to know that that stuff is cyclical. That behavior, those patterns are generational patterns of avoidance, of abandonment, of betrayal, whatever it is. What are the patterns that have shown up in your life? And the reason why I'm talking about relationship is because our relationships are our greatest teachers where we actually get a very close up view of our generational patterns. Our most intimate relationships are the ones that trigger us the most and show us what's beneath the surface. And when we are triggered and when we are hurt or when we're inspired, we get to pay attention and go, great, what am I gonna double down on? Because what I choose to ignore or I choose to nurture is what I'm gonna be eventually passing on to my children. So I believe that we all get this place where, you know, obviously, yeah, every day we're getting, you dealt second chance, a second chance to create. And today, you know, family days, we think about what do I want to pass on as my legacy and my relationship? I tell you, I got to a point in my relationships after I got divorced and after 10 years, my kids seeing me being with these, in these relationships where I was constantly struggling, okay? Constantly struggling. There was constant strife. There was constant arguing. There was just no intimacy. There was no trust. It felt very ungrounded. And eventually I got to the point where one day the pain got so great. You know, I got the universal kick in the ass. The pain got so great. There was betrayal after betrayal after betrayal the second time around. There was abandonment, abandonment, abandonment again. There was anger, anger, anger. And I finally got to the point where I looked at my kids and I was like, no way. No more. I am not taking another ounce of this, not only for myself, but for them, because whatever I keep entertaining in our life, in our home, in our family, in this atmosphere, which is your body, you know, as the leader of your family, whatever I entertain, whatever I bring in, whatever I perpetuate is what I'm passing on. Children do what they observe not what they're told. You know, how many of us are sitting here in unfulfilling, flat relationships where all they see is arguing or disconnection? They see a lack of intimacy, but we're telling them, oh, all these loving, fuzzy, warm, fuzzy things. They're not witnessing love. They're not witnessing intimacy. They're not witnessing connection. What they're witnessing is something very disconnected and very different than what comes out of your mouth half the time, right? And this was my wake-up call when I was like, now I started to see, you know, my girls were getting to an age where they were, you know, starting to get into boys and everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, I do not want these cycles to repeat for, for the kids. And I got to the point where I said, okay, I totally surrender my old ways. 
I know that I know that I know that I'm created to have an amazing relationship, a deep, intimate, wildly affectionate relationship. I know I'm supposed to build a partnership with an amazing man and we're here to co-create together. I always believe kings and queens are here to fully support each other in our mission. And I got so clear and I was like, no more. I would rather be alone, alone, single, than to move forward and keep perpetuating this cycle. So until I'm ready to call in that type of relationship and really I'm going to, I'm going to be alone and I'm going to do whatever it takes and literally surrendering. So the declaration was this stuff does not get to be part of our reality anymore. And that declaration, that defining moment is a humbling moment because in that moment I had to eat some massive humble pie and say, where am I showing up? as that type of woman that creates strife, that is mistrusting, that's disrespectful, that's not honoring the relationship, that's not honoring. And I had to learn how to be respectful, how to be loving, how to be intimate without transaction, right? I had to up level and release so many of those old wounds and those old patterns that I had, that programming that I had picked up that was familiar, but not my design. Not my divine design. I had to remember what God created me to be as woman, who he created me to be, and how he wanted me to be in relationship with my man, with my husband, now my husband. And it took years. Like it took, it took a while. Like it didn't take years for, for the relationship to unfold. Because once I ate some humble pie, one thing I'm very grateful about myself is once I realized, I, it takes me a long time, I'm pig-headed, I'm stubborn. But once I realized and I say, I'm in, I'm in refine, reshape, renew me. I do what it takes. And I got, you got to get to the point where you're willing to go without the very thing that you think you can't go without in order to release the old and embody the new. You got to get to the point that you're willing to fully surrender. And so as I did, a whole new world opened up within months. I met my soulmate and uh, we had this amazing relationship. And then it was funny because this last weekend we were together and we were doing this massive project. And I remember thinking, wow, there's no way I could have done this with my ex because we were taking apart this big, huge TRX system in the studio. This like $10,000 piece of steel equipment that's like a commercial grade uh, gym equipment. And I just remember if it was my old self in my old relationship patterns with my old partners, we were entangled in these argumentative, combative, competitive, you know, strife type of conversation. That those kind of things, projects that are, can be easy, be, were just always difficult. And I just remember the other day going like, man, I am so grateful that we get to do this stuff. We get to do quote unquote, what could seem like a really hard thing that could become a hot mess, but it just becomes easy. It's just easy when we work together, when we respect each other, when we honor each other. And that required a releasing of the old. Something else that's come up recently too, and, and I believe that as we're being called to rise higher in our next level of service, there's always a shedding right? There's always a shedding of the old. And every time we say, okay, I'm ready to serve at a higher capacity. I'm ready for a higher level of health. I'm ready for more intimacy. I'm ready to create a new kingdom. I use the word kingdom a lot because I believe we are here. Our kingdoms is our homes, our businesses, our communities, and we are kings and queens here co-creating these awesome kingdoms together, you know, co-creating together for a greater cause. But as, we're, as we get called into more service, into a higher level of service, there's always something we get to look at from the past, some old patterns, because we are always leaving something for our children. We're always leaving them with a repetition of the past, and then they have to figure out how to undo it, right? We're literally passing it and going, I don't know, I couldn't figure this shit out, but maybe you will. And they're taking the burden on or we're passing on a new reality. So one of the things that I recently noticed again, because every time we get called to upgrade, something new comes up is, you know, there was, I'm a warrior spirit. 
Okay, there's like, I'm fiery. I'm passionate and I'm fiery and I like to, I like the battle. But what I realized is even in our home, we had created an atmosphere that was just kind of, it wasn't peaceful, you know? There was a lot of just like, everybody can speak their opinion, people can argue, but we had done so in a way that there was a lot of just like ugh, tension sometimes and strife. And so, of course, Mark's hanging my sword up down there. <laughs> um, you know, but one of the things I got to declare is like, okay, I now declare that this home has an atmosphere of peace and understanding and acceptance. Because even though we had created an environment where it's like everybody can speak up, it wasn't a peaceful environment, right? It wasn't necessarily understanding. It was kind of like who could get their point across and there was a lot of agreeing to disagree, but not full acceptance. So now as I'm going, okay, in my home, in this home, this home gets to be a place where we have peace, we have understanding and we have acceptance. And that is like the deeper, the deeper work that we get to go through now, you know, is cultivating an atmosphere where this becomes a new normal. So the reason why I bring this up is that so much of the time when we think about what we're passing on, what we're passing on, what we want, we just stay at the surface level. You know, I want to make sure my kids are taken care of. They have nice clothes. They have nice stuff. They have this. They have the opportunity to be in sports, whatever. But we play on the surface. But I want to really challenge you to go deeper. When we talk about what legacy, what destiny, what gift, what curse am I passing on to my children, you know, if you guys are feeling like you're getting given a second chance, a second chance with your relationship to create a new type of relationship with your new partner or to recreate a marriage that has been broken that you can now create whatever you want, we get to go, what is it going to look like? What is it going to feel like? What are we saying yes to? And what are we absolutely not going to carry forward? We're not going to bring this past into us. You know, and it requires that we go beyond just like the behavior. Because the behavior is just a symptom of a deeper root, right? So what are, the, what are those fears, those lies, those generational patterns and ancestral patterns that have just been getting passed on in your family? And we all have different ones. You know, we all have them. But if you really want to create something new for yourself, for your new partnership, and by the way, again, I'm going to say it doesn't matter if you divorce and you're creating a new relationship with your partner, but there's people that I know that were married and had horrible marriages and now have the most amazing marriages because it's almost like they remarried themselves as two new people. So you can create the new. It doesn't mean you have to jump ship, right? But it, it's a renewal of the mind. It's a renewal of the heart. It's a renewal of the atmosphere. And when we renew our mind and our heart and our body and our atmosphere, we renew the experience that not only we experience and witness, but that of our children. And I'm really speaking now to those of us who have children. And have, the children have watched us. Go through that hard divorce. Go through the hard relationship. See the strife in our family. See the brokenness in our homes, the anger, the hurt, the pain. And children are observing, uh, um, observing and absorbing all of that energy. All of that energy. All of that stuff right at a cellular level. Spiritual cellular level. We have an opportunity to create a second chance not only for our own life, but to change the trajectory at a cellular and spiritual level for our children and our grandchildren. And this is how we got to start to shift the world, right? It's not just about, oh, living in a high vibe and making sure that I'm good and making sure that the kids have nice stuff. It's about we change the family uh, lineage from the inside out, from the inside on, from now on, right? And it is so liberating for you. And so I believe each one of us, at least the people that I do work with, we're, we're chain breakers. We're chain breakers. We're bondage breakers. We're here to break the ancestral roots and ties. 
whatever's been running in your family, whatever has been repeating itself over and over again, it doesn't matter what it is. Remember, it's not about the person. It's not like, oh, he's an asshole. My dad was this. My grandfather was that. No, there is a spiritual um, entity at play. There's an ancestral root that is being passed on. The person is just the vessel. We're just vessels that are carrying, that we're hosting. We're hosting these old patterns, these old wounds. We're hosting these old programs. We're hosting these old spirit. And we get to break it when we recognize it. So if you're someone that has experienced the pain and you're getting to the threshold, either through inspiration or desperation, remember, that's one of the two ways that we change. Either you're so inspired to create a change for yourself and create a second new a new normal, a second chance, or you're getting there because of desperation, you are being called to break the chains for your family. To whom much is given, much is required. And that requires us now that we have radical awareness and not make it about us, just us. Oh, poor me. Why do I always do this? Oh, now you're just in victim mindset. But we get radically aware of what has been existing, what has been getting passed on, what we're facing. And we go to battle with this thing. And it's not about fighting it away or pushing it away. We get to, we get to own that, that that's been there. And we get to start getting back to the core of our natural design, our design, our human design in God to say, what am I actually created for? What are the lies that I get to break? And we start to dissolve and we start to break and we start to transform and we turn all that pain into power. And you know, it becomes your greatest gift. It becomes your greatest gift. So if you've walked through hell and back, congratulations, because you got depth, you got richness in your soil to create some magic moving forward. To whom much is given, much is required. You guys, I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching this, if you join me live, I'd love to know what's come up for you. But think about where has my deepest pain been? Because that's where those deepest roots, that's like gonna be your richest soil the richest soil to create the new lies in the in that pain that when we transform it <sighs> i don't know i was writing a lot this morning i hope i made sense <laughs> i was a little bit tired but i wanted to jump on here and just share this for those of you who need to listen who need to hear this that if you've been given a second chance, what a beautiful gift, what an epic gift this is. Do not squander it. Please do not squander it. Recognize and see the gift and know that God is always trying to get our attention. And if you don't pay attention this time, eventually you're gonna get to another breaking point and the lesson will just keep repeating itself over and over and over again in your life and then in your children's life until somebody gets it, takes control of it and breaks the chain. Guys, I think that we just need our men right now. We don't need boys anymore. We need real men, real men to rise, to get out of this wounded warrior, angry warrior, lone wolf. And because as, you, as our men become more anchored, more certain, more grounded, they start to create more structure for the kingdoms, their homes, the feminine rises. So if you are a man, Who's like, Dad, I'm ready to unleash the king. I'm ready to unleash the king inside. I'm ready to call forth my queen. I'm ready to unlock the power of my heart and start to lead from the heart and work from the heart and serve from the heart. And I'm going to get out of the prison of my mind. This is a six-month initiation. And I, and I have that. It's called Warriors of the Heart. It's an initiation. It's a lot of structure. It's a lot of support. It's my most intimate container. And you guys can message me about that. So there's two ways I can help you. Um, right now, you know, in terms of getting some momentum real quick with a couple sessions or doing something um, much more in depth. But regardless, I want to just thank you again, those of you who are on here with me, joining me. In recap, you know, we all have things that we carry. We carry them from generation to generation to generation. The physical behavior that you witness over and over again that you can't stand is just an outward, you know, manifestation of what's going on at an emotional and spiritual level. So if you keep trying to change the behavior and you don't get to the roots, like it's going to be temporary. It's not going to have sustenance. It's not going to stick because it won't be embodied. It won't be in the body. So 
first step is just to create awareness. You know, what's been showing up over and over again? Let me not make it about him or her or the relationship. Let's get curious about what is the energy of our relationship that we've both been in, in, entrenched in, engaged in, you know, and trapped in. Because that's what you really want to break free from. There's an energy and there's a spirit to the bondage. I hope that this makes sense. And I, and this also is true, you know, for 10 years I owned a health and wellness studio. And people would come in and they would be cycling with the same 30 pounds over and over again. Lose it, gain it, lose it, gain it. Losing weight is never the problem. Keeping it off is the challenge, right? Having Making up after a fight is never the problem. You can make love, you can make up. But staying in love, being in love, sustaining love, sustaining the weight loss, sustaining the level of health, that requires a whole other level of showing up. So if you have been trying to create something unsustainably in your life, I want to invite you to consider that it's got to be more than just the behavior. There is an energetic, emotional, spiritual game being played and I got to get to the roots of this. And if I'm being called to lead a second chance, I got to get to those roots and I got to pluck them out in order to create space for the new. And that means getting back to my divine design.